So Brick has been around for five years now, since 2013, and uh, we were founded uh, to really start creating the hardware designed and engineered in Kenya to uh, allow people to get online easier across Africa. Uh, since that time, we've moved into a number of new things. Uh, number, number one, in which I'm here about today, is that we've been, uh, we've been taking our hardware expertise and putting that hardware out into the public spaces, um, putting it into the public spaces so that people who can't afford to get online can. So we have a software platform called Moja, Moja Wi-Fi, and it's on uh, 500 bu buses here in Kigali and another 1,000 buses in Nairobi. Uh, where people who can't normally afford to get online can just get online for free, and we make our money by the businesses who host their content on those devices. Oh, you've already, how long have you been here in Kigali for? So we've been in Kigali for just over a year, and um, we have a really good partner here uh, by the name of AC Group, and uh, so we work with them to deploy these units into the buses, and you know, at 500 buses, that's almost all of the buses for Kigali, uh, and so we have a really good penetration of the market here. In Nairobi, it's 1,000, but there's 1,500 to, sorry, 15,000 to 20,000 Matatus and buses, so we don't quite have the penetration we want there yet. Yeah, considering how crowded the public transportation is in Kenya, what are some of the challenges that you've had to deal with? <laughs> well, there's a lot of challenges. There's the operational challenges of just making sure that you have a piece of hardware that's rugged enough to withstand the vibrations, the temperature, uh, the people inside of the, of, of the bus, uh, you, because it's, it's a very hard place to work. Uh, there's other things though as well, it's like we work with the, the different SACOs, the Matatu owners groups, uh, to make sure that the units are installed correctly, that electricians know what they are and are prepared to be able to help with them and things like that so that cables don't get cut in the wrong places. There's all of these little things uh, that, that are important. They, they're all individually small but add up to a working network. Yeah, well here in Kigali you've partnered with SE Group but now SE Group has plans to move to Kenya as well as enter into the market of uh, providing public Wi-Fi. How will the competition be in that sector? No, it's good. I mean, we, we, we tend to want to stay partners with uh, organizations like AC Group. So even if we, we go to different geographies, we'll probably end up working with each other. What is your opinion on the concern over access to internet economy and the under restrictions of our, the internet services here on the continent? So one of the bigger problems we have in Africa is that when we think about connectivity, uh, we think about accessibility. Is Basically, do I have a signal nearby um, and do I have a device that can connect to it? But that's not the main problem anymore. There's a lot of signals around. There's, you can get 3G, 4G, you can get a Wi-Fi signal in different places, and a lot of people have smartphones now. Uh, the problem is that you can't afford it. So it's an affordability problem for connectivity, not an accessibility problem anymore. Yeah. So. Uh, that's actually the biggest challenge and what we've been trying to solve with Mojo Wi-Fi. How do we get the network spread out there in a way with a new business model that allows ordinary people who don't have the spending money to get online, they have to make a choice every day. Do I ride the bus and pay for that or do I try and get online? Uh, do, I, do I buy soap or, or, or Coca-Cola or a beer or do I get online? And so our job is to say, well, listen, if, if we want to have a, you know, a 21st century economy in Kenya or in Rwanda, then we need connectivity. We need power. And so our job is to try and get that connectivity out there so that it is open for everybody. And there's no restrictions for anybody to get online. Yeah, as you said, we need connectivity, we need power. Do you think that the continent already has the needed technological infrastructure for this to happen? Kind of. It depends. And so the answer is uh, it's building it in different places. So in, in some countries, we're starting to get a really good foundation of power. Uh, in others, that it's still lagging. Uh, we also, uh, with the connectivity side, are seeing actually quite a good foundation across you know, the mobile operators as well as the ISPs. But there's very uh, old and kind of legacy business models uh, which don't allow ordinary people to get online. And so the real numbers are, are interesting to look at. Across any country you go in Africa, about 20% of the population that owns smartphones, right? so they, they, they already have devices, they can get online. They have home Wi-Fi, they have it at work, uh, they can afford a data bundle. The other 80% who already own smartphones cannot afford to get online regularly. They'll spend you know, the equivalent of 20 cents uh, for a 100 megabyte bundle once a week. Or they might turn on WhatsApp on Sundays and, uh, and talk with their family. But they don't do it regularly because they can't afford it. So if you want a 21st century economy that has digital health care, uh, education, 
uh, you know, access to information, uh, e-commerce, all those things, those are all verticals that are built on top of a strong foundation of connectivity and power. And, uh, and, and so the models that we have today uh, aren't working for that 80%. And so Brick has come along with Mojo Wi-Fi to say, no, we can, we can answer this problem. There's a business model to solve this that's profitable. We just need to figure out how to do that correctly. And the way we figured it out was saying, okay, businesses can, can pay for the cost of the internet, so that subsidizes the cost of the consumer to get online. Yeah, do you think the private sector has a role to play in actually changing people's mentality when it comes to the use of uh, internet? Yeah, they do. Uh, you know, the, the businesses uh, that operate in both you know, the, the purely tech space as well as the, the analog world around us, uh, you know, they're, the, they're the ones who people see every day. And so the education of what the internet is, how it can be used, the opportunities that exist there are very much a part of the, the commercial world. Yeah, the 20% that you gave. Some people may say, yes, they're connected, but to an extent, they're also constrained. They, are, they cannot, uh, when you look at the opportunities for scaling innovation, it's still a bit challenging. What is the way forward for this? Well, it's about deeper penetration of, of the network. Um, so the problem we have is that we only have 20% connected. So everybody's, first of all, all the commercial parties are fighting over the same 20%, and 80% are being left to the side, not being answered uh, by, by the government sometimes, or by the commercial partners that could be out there to subsidize their cost. It's only when you have a true deep penetration of the internet in a country that you start to see the real values being added. And it comes across the same way we did with the mobile phones. When only 20% of the population had mobile phones, it had some value, but only to the rich. When we started to get penetration of mobile phones down to everybody in the, in, in the, in the whole environment, right, in the whole country, then what happened was we got people doing different things. All of a sudden they could do commerce with their phone, they could make phone calls that, that would usually cost them a trip somewhere and back. So the friction of life in business, in, in home life, uh, in government, everything got better, it got faster, it got more efficient. It's the same thing applies to the internet. When we get past that 20%, we start getting real penetration of the internet to everybody in a country, everything changes. From social benefits, to education benefits, to, uh, to agricultural benefits, to commerce benefits, everything changes. 